Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in a previous video, I documented my initial experiments trying to learn KiCad, which I'm told is pronounced KiCad and not KiCad. In that video, I started to put down various components, but I didn't finish things. So here I wanted to show you the finished design. And I should mention, I haven't tested this on the breadboard, so I have no idea if what I'm doing here is really a good idea or not. What I'm trying to do is to create a version of the Serge dual processor, and really I just have one of them here, so I guess it's a single processor, modified to work with the tangible waves format. So the original Serge used a plus minus 12 volt bipolar supply, tangible waves uses a zero to five volt unipolar supply. But in order for this to work, I really need to have a ground reference where I can use inverting amplifier structures. And I was going to use a max 1044 to generate a minus 5 volt supply from the plus 5 volt and also generate a higher voltage, doubling that to 10 volts, actually less than 10 volts. I'll talk about that in a second. And for that, I thought I would need to use two of these max 1044, these 1044 power converter chips. But it turns out you can actually just use one chip and generate the negative supply and your double positive supply with one max 1044. Of course, there is current limitations into how much you can get out of this, but it should be fine for such a simple circuit. Anyway, notice here I have 7 volts and I have a couple of diodes. So what's going on? So this circuit would generate the minus 5 volts and it will generate a positive voltage that's double your input voltage, which would be 10 volts, minus twice whatever your diode drop here is. So if I just use one diode, that would be 0.7 volts thereabouts, and double that would be around 1.4 volts, which would probably give me around 8.6, or let's round it to 8.5 volts. Now, for reasons I'll tell you in a second, I actually put two diodes here, so that gives me a drop of around 1.4 volts, which doubled gives me 2.8 volts, so that would give me an output of something like 7.2 volts, which I just rounded for 7 when writing this. And the reason I did that is that the 358 op amps that I'm using here can go all the way down to the negative rail, but not all the way up to the positive rail. The output can only go to within a couple of diode drops of the positive rail. So if I go from seven volts, a couple diode drops down, puts me around 5.5 volts. So the output here will max around 5.5 volts. And I wanted to do that because I do want to be able to go all the way up to the five volts of CV that Tangible Waves uses. But I didn't want to go too far beyond that because I was worried about potentially damaging some other Tangible Waves module. A lot of Tangible Waves designs use this MCP600 whatever series of op amps. These are nice because they have rail to rail outputs, but they are limited in terms of their power supply voltage. And if you take a look at the absolute maximum ratings, the inputs can go to a volt below the lower power supply rail and a volt above the power supply rail. So having a max of 5.5 should be fine. To protect things on the lower end, I put this diode clamp here. So if this goes below 0.7 volts, it should clamp, so that should be okay. Now, I could have set up the max 1044 here with just one diode here and one diode here. That would give me an 8.5 volt supply. And if I did that, I could put some diodes here to clamp things on the upper end. I guess these op amps would technically work better at the higher power supply voltage of 8.5 volts than seven volts, but I don't think anyone will notice the difference. And this is the first thing I thought of. All right, what about reverse voltage power supply protection? I shouldn't really need it. The way the ribbon cable flows in the Tangible Waves cabinet, I shouldn't be able to screw this up. Nobody should be able to screw this up, but I'm paranoid. So here we're using a PFET for reverse voltage protection. And this is a very weird thing. I have trouble wrapping my head around it. Here we're basically using the PFET backwards. So the idea here is that 
for the channel to open, the gate needs to be at a lower potential than the source over here. And if you have the power supply reversed and you try to put the 5 volts down here and you try to put the ground up here, that doesn't work out and you wind up with current not flowing. But if you have the 5 volts up here and I have the ground down here, then it's using the body diode in the MOSFET, this parasitic diode here, so that current will start flowing and then you'll have something like 4.3 volts sitting here. So the gate will be at 4.3 volts lower than that. So then the channel can start opening. And once the channel's opening, you just have the on resistance of the MOSFET. And you'll have pretty close to your 5 volts out here, assuming you have a decent on resistance for your MOSFET. There's other approaches to reverse power protection. One approach is to put a series diode here, and that works. It does have the problem that you have the voltage drop across the diode, which will be larger than whatever drop you're going to get across this MOSFET probably. You can get a pretty low voltage drop if you use a shot key diode, but this MOSFET I think will still be better. A lot of synth designs will put a resistor here to use basically as a cheap ad hoc fuse. One issue with that is that you have a voltage drop that depends on the current. A voltage drop across the diode is also going to depend upon the current draw, but it's not going to be as sensitive as a resistor will. And a resistor is not a fuse. It will vaguely act like one, but it won't act like one in a predictable fashion. It's good for messing around on the breadboard where you can use your olfactory sensors to detect if something's going wrong, but you don't want to use the resistor as fuse business in an actual product. Another thing people will do is they'll have a shunt configuration diode where you put the diode across the voltage rails. And that works if you have a fuse, either a real fuse or a poly fuse, because there the diode is designed to conduct and then blow the fuse. But if you don't use it with a fuse, you then blow the diode. I've seen that a lot in guitar pedals. I've heard it called a warranty diode. But you should not ever design your circuit so that they'll blow up. And in particular, if you have some sort of protection mechanism, the protection that is meant to kick in when somebody hooks something up wrong, that protection mechanism should not blow up. According to the BS250 datasheet, it can handle 250 milliamps, which should be fine for this circuit and a lot of other synth module circuits. Now, you'll often see a Zener diode here along with a resistor to make sure that the gate to source voltage doesn't exceed any limits that might damage the MOSFET. I left that out because when I look at the max gate source voltage for the BS250, I see 20 volts. And although you can get weird voltage spikes, I think we're far away enough from any danger zone with this plus 5 volt power supply that I just left it out. A couple of other quick notes about using KiCad. Several people told me it's a lot easier to use with a mouse, and that's definitely true. I can right-click to pan around. And let's see, there is something else I wanted to change here. The scroll wheel will zoom, but when I do that, it sort of recenters wherever the cursor is, and I don't want it to do that. Apparently, there's a preference where I can change that. Let me check that out. Okay, let's see. There's this mouse and touchpad preferences menu. Center and warp cursor on zoom. Let me turn that off. Ah, okay. So it's zooming based on where my cursor is, which is fine, but it's not jumping. So I like that better. Yeah, that makes me a lot happier. So if you wanted, you could leave pin two here disconnected and connect a cheap resistor fuse between one and three. Although again, resistors are not fuses, so that's not really a great idea. Or you could put a shot key diode here running between one and three if you left two disconnected and try that form of reverse polarity protection. Or if you feel brave, you can just jumper this all together.